Well, hello. It is good to have you back with me here in the shop of Woodspun Round. This is Doug, and I am so excited to be with you again. We've got on the lathe today a, um, a Bartlett pear blank. Uh, this is the pear tree that was given to me about a month or so ago. Uh, one of the things I like to do when someone gives me some wood, especially a large amount of wood, is make sure that I turn a piece just for them. And so uh, this is not the first piece out of this pair that I've turned, but it's uh, second or third, and it's the first piece of any size. Uh, the other things have been mostly spindle. Um, but anyway, this is a bowl. Uh, what I'm doing here is I've I've already cut it roughly on the on the uh, bandsaw, gotten myself a nice big disc, and. Um, I've turned it with the bark side to the tailstock, and I'm making that the bottom side of the bowl. So, uh, what you saw in the in that earlier scene, and then now, um, I was taking away the bark, and I'm just now starting to get into the uh, actual wood. One of the problems with the, with the starting with that bark side like that is it's an awful lot of bouncing, and I started out turning this at 350 RPMs. That was as fast as I could go. And it was, uh, even then, it was starting to rock the lathe just a little bit. And I'm gotten it down close enough where I can start working on um, creating a tenon on this end, on this back side, the bottom side of the bowl. And that's what I'm doing right here. I'm, I'm cutting through the bark and into the wood. Uh, what I'm actually going to do, um, getting my tool rest set right here, I'm going to cut across this bottom and make a, a, a tenon. And what's there already, what looks like a tenon, I'm going to actually turn it away. There'll be just a little bit left of it. And uh, we'll talk more about that here in just a minute. Tried to turn the speed up right there just a little bit, and it went up just a hair, not very much. I think I got it up to 370 RPMs and started to bounce again. You can see there uh, what's coming off the tool is really dark and then it turns white and that's where I'm going through the bark getting into the actual wood itself reducing that nub even further it needs to be pretty small um, so that it's out of the way when I reverse it into the chuck Here we are actually going to make the tenon now. You see those nice long strips of, of wood? Um, it just kind of shows you this wood is still a bit wet. Uh, it's only been down, it's, it's been down about a month, uh, six weeks at the very most, uh, but it is still very wet. I do not have a moisture meter, and so I couldn't, I can't check it to see exactly what it is. But I decided I better make a, that tenon just a little bit longer, and so I'm making that second pass. I'm going to bring it down to that first bit there. There we go. Let's just clean it up a little bit, trim off that nub just a little bit more. I was a little afraid it would be, um, it would stick down into the, uh, the center part in between the jaws and would not allow the jaws to close completely. So I, I decided I better cut that down a bit more. Uh, and then I'm gonna bring in the skew right here just to put a very slight amount of dovetail on it. Uh, my jaws are actually straight, but they do have a, a gripper tooth at the very top end. And so I like to put just a tiny bit of dovetail on it, just so that gripper tooth has somewhere to grab uh, without actually cutting into the wood. And then I want a flat spot as well. And so uh, that's what I was doing on that second, that second cut with the skew. So now we're back to a bowl gouge. Uh, this is that uh, Doug Thompson half inch bowl gouge and I use it an awful lot. I've got this uh, this tool that I really like. Then I've got a couple of Sorby half inch 
uh, bowl gouges. I like them as well. Uh, I like the Doug Thompson. It seems to keep its edge a, a bit longer uh, because it is cryogenically treated. And so uh, once I get it sharp, I like to use it until it's until the sharpness is gone. Then I'll break out my Sorbies and use them before I go to sharpen all of them again. There I have my tenon. Uh, and, and so I'm going to go back out here to the outside. Uh, you, you see those couple of portions of bark. Uh, that's causing me a little bit of a fit right now. I still can't speed the lathe up too awful much. Um, I tried right there. You see the lathe shaking. Seems like I got it right at 400 and it started to shake. And so I had to back it back down. Uh, and, and then bring it back up slowly. I had to drop it way back, like to 300 or something. But then once I once it quit shaking, I was able to speed it back up. Uh, went to about 370 again. So we're going to come on up here, start working on some of this area that hasn't been turned yet. I'm not trying to cut real deep. I'm trying to get some control cuts. Uh, trying to make this thing as smooth as it could be so that I could speed that speed up. But even still, you see hanging off my hands there and, and falling about are some nice long shavings. You'll see more of those. Uh, and it gets kind of fun here in a few minutes. Those were some that piled up on my arm and so I just kind of had to dump them out on the floor there. Still loads of, loads of bark. We're not going to stay with this, uh, uh, watching this this roughing out uh, too much longer. Uh, we're going to skip over um, here in just a minute because it does get, it's just kind of rinse and repeat over and over and over again. But again, you see those long shavings piling up on my, on my left hand there. That's part of the fun of turning green wood. The downside of turning green wood, especially if you're only going to turn it once, is that it will warp on you. Um, this piece before I was done um, had already started to warp. I don't know how much more it's going to warp, uh, but it, as of right now, um, well, to finish it off, I tried to put it on a vacuum chuck and I just could not get it on there because there was too much warp. Um, the only way it would take suction would be if I moved the bowl off center and I needed it to be on center so I could remove that tenon. So uh, it, it, it does warp on you. You just have to decide if you're um, willing to accept the warp. And if you're not, if you want to turn green and you're not willing to accept the warp, then what you have to do is twice turn. So you rough turn the bowl to about 10%. Your walls need to be about 10% of your overall uh, diameter. Now you see right there, I'm fiddling with it. I actually broke that little nub. And so it forced me to go ahead and turn it around and here you see where I've turned it around, uh, got the bottom in the chuck. It's, it's being held by the chuck alone now. And I'm working on this outside, trying to complete this curve. I want a nice curve from the bottom all the way to the top. That means I gotta get through some, some rough wood still. I, I never have gotten through all the rough wood. There's those shavings. Make one pass, and I pretty well have to dump them because they're just simply too long, too many of them. Uh, I can't see that well, I can't see through them, and so uh, I make one pass, dump the shavings, and then I can continue on. But as you can see, we're making progress. Having to move my tool rest a bit losing contact up toward the top there plus I was getting uh, uh, too far my tool was hanging over the tool rest a little bit too far so I wanted to move get a little closer still got to get that top edge it's it's still not smooth up through there yet still a little bark on it even switched over to a pull cut And I just noticed my hand, my right hand there, looks like it is really gripping uh, that, that tool. And, and it's really not. My hand is pretty well relaxed. 
my fingers just happen to be wrapped around. Um, starting to make some more finishing type cuts on this lower part of the bowl. Uh, it's it's pretty well to the shape I want. I'm just kind of cleaning it up, getting it to a place where when I do finish that rim, when I'm ready to start working on the inside, I don't have a lot left to do, uh, especially toward the bottom. I do have a little more to work to do on that rim still. I'm gonna leave a little bit of an overhanging rim. Um, this is just kind of a utilitarian type of a bowl. And one of the things that I have learned is that when uh, people go to pick up a bowl, they like to have something there it feels like they can grip instead of just the smooth side. So you don't have to, don't have to stick your thumbs down in the bowl. Uh, you don't have to grip the bowl real hard. Um, that, that little bit of a, a rim will allow you to pick the bowl up and feel like it's secure in your hand um, you know, with, with a whole lot less pressure and having to grip the, the bowl quite so stinking hard. Sped the lathe up right there. I think I got it up uh, just to like 450 or something of that nature. 400, 450. Checking with my finger, seeing if I got it smooth. It's not quite. We're actually going to stop it here in just a minute. You can see, you'll be able to see that I'm not quite smooth yet. Thought I saw a little ridge there, felt it sure enough. And so I'm doing a sheer scrape, or maybe it's a sheer cut. I got that off, power's coming down. You can see that rim is still not quite ready to go. Still has just a hint of bark on it. Giving myself just a little little uh, edge of a foot down there at the bottom and then cleaning up uh, above it. I want to readjust my tool rest here, I think. Yeah. Paying attention to that bark. What do I got to do? Uh, uh, I know this is not going to be that thick, but I, I got to get through the bark and then I can see where the top of my curve uh, can go. I just I cannot get enough of those long strands coming off this wet wood. It's not sopping wet. It's not spraying me. Uh, it's not really cold as it comes off. Um, but it is, uh, wood just doesn't come off that nicely. And you'll see some more heavier, longer strands coming off here in, in a bit. One of the things I've had to learn to get over, and, and I see a lot of it in a lot of videos, where people don't move their tool rest enough. Um, I'm trying to do better at moving my tool rest more often so that I'm not forcing myself to go way out over my tool rest. I, wanna, I want to uh, stay pretty close to the wood, um, get a lot less vibration, a lot more control in the cuts and it just works better and so here I've moved my tool rest around so I can start back at the bottom that rim is pretty close to where I want it and so I've got to readjust my my curve is too close to the edge of that rim so I need to take that down and I'm coming from the bottom up that means I've got the grain ahead of the cut supporting the cut if I were to go from the top down, uh, I would be cutting into the grain. 
and that would give me more tear out, more problems, more issues, all of them fixable, but it's just more issues that I have to deal with. This way, uh, I've got fewer issues. I had very little tear out, if any, in this bowl. Part of that is because I cut, I'm not sure it was 100% I cut with the grain, but I cut the vast majority. Um, look at that pile of curls. Just amazes me how this pear does. And once it's dry, it's, it's totally different. It doesn't, the texture of the wood is not the same once it's dry. It doesn't cut the same. Feeling that that uh, rim, it, do I have enough? A little bit of a shear scrape here. You can see that dark rim or dark ring an inch or so up from the bottom, and, and I'm trying to eliminate that. little ring right there just below the rim that I want to eliminate. Those dark lines are shadow lines being caused by irregularities in the curve of that bowl and so I'm trying to get those irregular irregularities out of there so that uh, you don't have those extra shadow lines. It's a grain line fine. We finally got it finished, flipped it around or came it was already flipped around so I just came around Moved my tool rest to the front. I flattened out the rim. And here we're about, uh, I don't know, a little less than halfway uh, doing the hollowing of the bowl. I'm trying to work my way down the, the side. I leave that center part to give me some stability. So in case I do get thin, um, those walls don't start to flex quite so bad. Once I get through with the top, I try not to come back to it gotten a little further down you saw me there using my digital calipers to check and make sure that uh, those sidewalls were even all the way down I had a little bit of thickness so I backed up got it and continued on down just a little further now I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna check again there again my digital calipers don't ask me if they're metric or or uh, SAE it doesn't matter <laughs> I'm not measuring how thick the walls are. I'm measuring to see if they're uh, even all the way down. Your fingers can tell you a whole lot. Even when you do uh, like I was just doing, one hand on the inside, one hand on the outside, uh, your fingers can tell you if you're parallel all the way down. Doing a little more work, trying to get some of this bulk out of the bottom, working from the center out toward the transition area. And here I'm, I've gone back to the wall, coming through the transition and into that center section. This bowl was kind of an odd size and that uh, that transition point was just at a weird place. It didn't feel comfortable, didn't feel right going inside out. And uh, it was kind of tough to get to going outside in. Even though outside in on the inside of the bowl is with the grain. Uh, that way you have uh, going out from the outer portion of the bowl toward the center on the inside of the bowl, uh, you have wood supporting or grain supporting your cut. And so uh, that's what you try to do. But going across the bottom, if it's a flat bottom bowl, you, it doesn't matter if you're going in or out. It's, it's the same difference. Um, so anyway, We've gotten done with all that. We got the transition done as, as best we could. We're starting here uh, with sanding at 60 grit. I'm gonna work all the way up to 320 grit. And then we're gonna use some abrasive paste. Uh, I like the, I've been using the Axe abrasive paste. That's what I've got and, and it's doing a, a fine job. And after the Axe abrasive paste, I'm not gonna go directly to the wax. I'm gonna put another finish on it. And I'll tell you about that when we get there. But we're sanding here. That was the 60 grit. We've gone all the way to 320. I just blew it out. And what you see here is my can of denatured alcohol. I'll get one of my uh, quarter sheets of, of paper towel and get it pretty wet with the alcohol. 
And right here, I'm doing it while it's spinning. I will turn it off and, and kind of rub it down inside and out, top to bottom, uh, getting all that residue of, of uh, sanding dust off the wood so that it's not sealed into the wood when I start to put finish on it. You see me turning it by hand, actually rubbing. I'm always amazed how much dust comes out of the wood even after I've taken my compressed air and, and blown it out. And I, I'm finding no dust. I can feel no dust. But then when I rub it down with the alcohol, it comes out on that paper towel. <laughs> it's a funny little bottle, but in that bottle is water locks. It's the green label water locks. Uh, comes out of the can and now out of this bottle i've decanted a portion into this bottle uh, but it comes out really dark looking i'm always afraid when i put it on that for that very first time um, that's going to stain my wood and make it dark but it really doesn't as you can see here it brings out a little bit of sorry about the truck going by um, but it, it brings out the color of the wood it really does not darken the wood at all so i get a a pretty good coat on the outside. I start the rim. I put some on the outside. And for whatever reason, I am just not sure that I've got a a good coat of this water locks on this bowl. And so uh, I'm going to do something I don't do a whole lot of. I thought I was going to do it right there, but apparently I'm going to rub some more on. Here we go. I am turning down the lathe, turn it down to uh, 180, 200, somewhere in that neighborhood. So I don't want to sling this oil off. Uh, but you see me load my, my paper towel up again. And I started at the bottom, working my way to the top of the bowl. Getting a just, I, I just want a good heavy coat to begin with. I actually squirt it onto the bowl uh, on the inside. I'm going to do this two or three times so that I can get the whole bowl. I want the whole bowl covered with this good heavy coat. And then I'm going to, I'm going to wait uh, a little bit, and then I'm going to wipe it off. Um, I want it to be in the wood, on the wood, but then I don't want it sitting on the wood. I, I want a good coating, but not excess. And so I'm going to wipe it off. Then I let it sit for uh, close to 24 hours, I guess. The can says, you know, wait 24 hours, but uh, I was somewhere close. And I came in and put a second coat, and I waited another almost 24 hours. And I put a third coat, uh, and then, um, you know, it was looking pretty good, but I could see some streaks in it. Um, I don't think it was anything major. Um, here, what you're seeing is where I was white. Or I was buffing off that very first coat, and I found a cat hair. But we got it taken care of, and I were just buffing it off. And uh, I went from here to uh, abrasive paste after three or four coats, and it had dried well. And then I waxed it well, and so it came out quite nice. And this will go back to the folks who gave me the tree. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, if you'll hit the like and subscribe button, the notification button as well. Those things will help me as much as anything in the world, and I surely would appreciate it. This is Doug at Woodspun Round, and until we meet again, I hope you're able to spin them round.